What is up, Wolfpack? In this video, we go over how to introduce an e collar. It is the ultimate e collar introduction training guide by yours truly, Ethan, with one of our dogs in our board and train, Koba. Hope you like it and make sure you stay till the end to see the results. So, we use e collars to communicate with a dog when we want them to do something. All it is is a little bit of pressure. It's not zapping the dog, it's not shocking the dog, and it's not hurting the dog. That is never the idea. The idea is to facilitate the communication between you and your dog and teach your dog how to turn the pressure off. They're really not that bad. There's a lot of things you can read on online about how you know they're inhumane, the idea is to hurt the dog, you know, all this BS. It's really not that bad if you know what you're doing, and I'm gonna show you guys exactly what we do with every single dog. In order to introduce the e-collar to your dog, your dog has to know the basic commands. The five basic commands, sit, down, stay, come, and place. We use a, a place board. You don't have to use a place board. It makes things a lot easier for the stay and the place. Uh -uh. Koba, place, good boy. Koba, come. So he knows come, place, all the way. Yes, good boy, down. He obviously knows sit and he knows stay. Your dog has to know these commands in order to turn the pressure off. If you're telling someone to do something and you're holding pressure on them and they don't know what you're asking them to do, it's unfair, it's unrealistic, and your dog's never gonna learn it. So we have to teach the dog the basic commands first, and then we can go in and add in the e-collar with communication. Okay, so the second thing that we are gonna do is find Koba's lowest level. Koba has the basic obedience down, and now, there's 100 levels on this mini educator. We are gonna find his lowest level. It's probably gonna be anywhere between three and eight. I don't feel it on my arm until level 12, 13, 14, somewhere in that range, just a slight, tiniest little tingle. It's not gonna hurt him. So we're gonna start here. We're gonna move to level one. You can kind of see it. Nothing, I promise you, he's not gonna feel level one. This is level three. Uh, maybe he almost feels that. Let's go to level four and see what he feels. All right, so level four, you see that. If you if you saw him, when I click it, his head moves, I'm gonna, I'm gonna be in silence, so my voice isn't affecting it, but when I click it, his ears move, he's like, it's the tiniest of sensation. So that's the level that we're gonna work Koba on at first. It's super easy. It is obviously not hurting him, it is just, a little bit, it's a tap on the shoulder, a little bit of communication, right? Okay, so the third thing that we are gonna do is we're gonna start teaching Koba how to turn off this little tingle that he feels. What we're gonna do, it's a lot easier to start with a cum than it is with you know a sit down, stay, whatever it is, because a cum is very basic and self-explanatory. But what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna tell Koba to come and I'm gonna hold pressure. I'm gonna give him a couple taps, and the second he gets to me and is sitting down, we'll release the pressure. Ready? I'll show you. I am holding pressure. Koba, come. Pressure, 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 pressure. Release. That's what we do. Good boy. Koba, place. Yes. Koba, come. Pressure, 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 pressure. Release. On the way back, we're gonna start using pressure as well. Koba, place. Pressure, 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 release. Good. As you can see, it's not hurting him. It's communication. It's all it is. Still taking his food. This is his kibble that he's eating. Koba, come. Good boy. Place. Yes. As you can see, I held pressure. I say, I tell him to do something. I hold pressure immediately after. And the second he does the command, what I ask him to do, the pressure gets released. So now he is learning this communication between us. We're gonna practice this a little bit, you know, maybe 10, 15 reps. Yes, place. Yes. As you can see on that one, he is learning that I'm, that he's turning the pressure off and his come is getting a lot quicker. His sit is getting a lot quicker and his place is getting a lot quicker just in the, you know, six or seven reps that we've done. Once we've done some reps on the come and the place, what we're gonna start doing is the sits and downs and the stays and those other commands. So Koba, sit. Yes! I held pressure there, second he sat down, the second his butt hits the ground, the pressure gets released. It's all about timing with dogs. Koba, down, release. 
holding pressure, and then I release. The second he is in a down. It is gonna take, sometimes he's gonna feel it, and he's gonna be like, oh, what is that? And that's because, right, we're still introducing it to him. It's okay if he takes, especially at first, it's okay if he takes an extra, you know, couple seconds to really get the sensation. We're, we're gonna let him figure it out. We're gonna let him figure out what we're telling him to do. Down. Yes. Holding pressure and I release. Again, right, forming these associations that I'm communicating with him and he has complete control over turning this off. But over time, this is gonna end up essentially working as a leash, right? It's, it's gonna work as leash pressure, a leash pop, a tap on the shoulder, whatever it may be, however you want to describe it. It is gonna be us telling Koba to do something off a leash, whether we're across the field or across a room inside, whatever it may be. And Koba is gonna understand me or his owners are gonna, right, are communicating with him. That's all we're doing. Koba, come. Yes. Obviously this is, we don't want him sitting facing away from us, but we're gonna pick our battles for now. We're all we're working on is e-collar introduction. We're not working on tightening anything up yet. Koba, place. Yes. Good boy. And I release pressure once he's on the place board. Koba, place. Nah. -uh. So here, here's a good example. Place. He ignored me. Gave him a tap on the e-collar. He listened. Starting to understand it. Obviously, it takes a lot more than this, but that's the basics. And that's all, that's all we're gonna do here. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna continue adding these distractions. Right now, there's not very many distractions. Occasionally a person runs by, it's a very mild distraction. There's a leaf blow going on in the distance, some leaves blowing around, but it's not too much of a distraction. We're gonna continue adding on distractions. Maybe come here when there's a lot more foot track, a lot more people running around like that, a lot more of everything and continue working on things there. Then go to a busier place where there's a lot of foot traffic and people and dogs and you know all that. Um, but Koba is doing absolutely amazing. As you can see, we are not hurting him. We're communicating with him. And this is exactly how an e-collar introduction should go. It should not be giving a correction, um, you know, painfully or forcefully making a dog do something. You want a dog to want to work for you. Koba, come. Pressure. Good boy, place. Good boy. And I release pressure the second he's on. But he is doing awesome. We're not hurting him. We're communicating with him. For all you people out there that don't know what they're talking about, that say e collars are adversive and they hurt a dog, tell me, are we hurting Koba? I, 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 I actually, I, I would like to know um, what is wrong with exactly what we're doing because. Koba is happy as can be. He's loving life. We're just chilling out here and everything is good. So if you like videos like this, make sure you follow along and uh, we'll see you in the next one. Hey guys, thanks for sticking through to the end. I appreciate all your support. Make sure you like and subscribe and we'll see you in the next one.